Hi everyone, and thank you for tuning in to my tutorial for floating dadasana or floating staff pose. So I'm going to be going over a bunch of different drills or modifications that you can take that help you find the strength that lead up to floating dandasana. But first, I will show you the full pose. So to get started, you'll come into a seated position, just like your seated forward fold or your Paschimottanasana. Feet are flexed, legs are glued together, so you're really squeezing and engaging right from the start. And then you'll take your hands beside your hips. Now you can always play with floating dandasana or sorry, just dandasana, by pressing the palms down, or if you're like me and have short arms, then you can press the fingertips down. But just to really help find the length in your spine, keeping the active engagement in your legs and in your core as you firmly press down into the mat. The next step would be floating dandasana. So if you are going for floating dandasana, then what you want to think about is taking your hands a little bit further forwards. I like to say about mid-thigh. Palms are flat, fingers are spread wide. Again, legs are engaged. From here, you're going to really engage your core, so your spine will round a little bit. You'll take an inhale, and on your exhale, you'll press, engage, fire up the core, and pick up the hips. And try and hold for a few breaths. So for floating to dasana, what's important here is leaning forwards a little bit with your hands slightly forwards to help you shift that weight a little bit easier. If you were to start with your hands right beside the hips and then try to pick up, it'd be really difficult because your center of gravity isn't in the right place. So when you are picking up the hips, you want to think about sliding the hips back and up between your arms. So hands down, I'll demonstrate again. Chest forwards a little bit, core strong, legs engaged. On your exhale, again, thinking hips back and up. Exhale, hips back and up. So really emphasizing there the action of pulling back and up. So some options that you can play with if you're not quite there yet on doing the full pose. You can take your hands on top of blocks. This just gives your legs a little bit more space to lift off the ground. So your hands will go on the blocks. Again, same alignment, same setup. And on your exhale, you'll press down, lift the hips back and up, and float. If you're working more on support through the legs, then you can take a block and just take it underneath the heels. And this will help you work the lift through your hips while having your feet also at the same height but having something to press down on. Of course, this can also be done without the block. However, sometimes the block gives a little bit more height and it feels better for some. But again, hands down, same setup. You press and you lift. If your hamstrings are tight, with your feet on the block, it might be a little bit harder, which is why sometimes it feels better with the blocks for some. Other times, taking your heels off the block and keeping your heels down as you lift up is also great. So another drill that you can do for floating dandasana, with your hands down, again, same setup for all of these. You can just practice lifting your hips, and just maybe picking up one foot and switching or even keeping your hips down, and then just working the quad, the hip flexor engagement as you alternate lifting the legs. So that is my tutorial on floating dandasana. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that you take the time to listen to many more.